So we are heading towards the very ecstatic and beautiful festival of Sri Goda Purnima, the appearance day of Lord Chaitanya. And also holy pastimes are happening here in Vrindavan, full of colors and joy and the love of Radha Mohan and their all gopis, sakis, manjaris. Today we will read the verse number nine from Vilapa, Shishi Vilapa Kusmanjali. But in the next two days, we will all go on to share and relish Goranga Leela. And also today we would like to put it inside and connect it because this is eternally connected. Goranga Leela and Radha Mohan's Leela are non separable. So we read verse number nine, but I also want to touch verse number eight because these verses are all these transcendental lamentations full of love of Raghunathas or Tulsi Manjari. And they are all intertwined, connected, and very much uh, belong together. This is the verse about, again, separation mood and desire to get the mercy of the lotus feet. O oh Goddess, this person has died from the bites of the black snake of separation from you. <laughs> oh Goddess, this person has died from the bites of the black snake of separation from you. Please revive me with the medicinal black that anoints your lotus feet. <laughs> And in the verse before, the prayer was, O oh Goddess, I am helpless and afflicted in the middle of an ocean of sorrow. Please take me to the wonderful abode of your lotus feet in the powerful boat of your mercy. <coughs> o oh Goddess, this person has died from the bites of the black snake of separation from you. Please revive me with the medicinal lack that anoints your lotus feet. So this wonderful, wonderful prayer of Raghunath Das Goswami is in his full absorption of his belonging to Shimati Radhika's lotus feet as her Maid servant. And because we had on our weeks before, we also had the subject of the mercy 
of the lotus feet and the power of the lotus feet service. Chara and Seva. I found this verse, it's all connected to the desires of Raghunath Das, that he feels that this color on Shrimati Radhika's lotus feet is the medicine for revival. And I feel this is such a beautiful and very heart-touching subject because we also want to be revived by the mercy of our Ishtadev. We want to become alive in our identities as eternal servants, dasis. And we are repeating these prayers of Raghunath Das with the utmost respect and feeling of gratitude that he left his prashad for us and that our dear, most respected Ananda Das Babaji Maharaj made it so easy for us to, to feel, you know, these feelings with the commentaries that he has given, that our most dear Gurudev Sadhu Maharaj has been showing this with us again and again and again for the last five, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years. And uh, we are so happy and so full of gratitude and we cannot even express what it means to us to be able to hear this from your mouth, Gurudev, and from all the Vaishnavas' lotus mouths that how they feel, the feelings affect our lives, that Raghunath Das Goswamis and all the other Dasis, our Gurudevs, have prepared us to feel something like a separation from Shrimati Radhika and eagerness to come into her service. And everyone, please feel invited to, to share and express also your feelings and enhance all our meditations and all our feelings together. In the previous verse, Sripad attained the relish of Swami. <coughs> yes? I feel it's interesting, the lack, no? Foot yes. lack, yeah. Foot lack. Yeah, and uh, we can understand as in our meditation as a maidservant, what is the meaning of this lack? This is actually um, a symbol uh, of the service. The life of, of Manjaris is actually the service. And the lack is a symbol of this service. So, and for this, for me, it's uh, uh, clear to understand that the example of the, uh, the lack is uh, given because it's a symbol of our service. <clears throat> we know that it's de described sometimes when uh, Krishna is, is doing this service that he starts with a nervous hand and he cannot do this. <laughs> right, no? and so and then Swamini kicked him off and then uh, she gave the service to her maidservants. They are more cool and relaxed and expert to do this. And so we understand this verse, this prayer. Maybe we can repeat this. You can show me. Oh, Goddess, this person has died from the bites of the black snake of separation from you. That means also from the service. Because for the Manjaris, the service is their life. And if they are, if we are separated 
from our service, it's like that. And so we understand this. It's uh, the black snake of separation is that we are separated from our service. And because of this, it's a feeling of death. Without service, we are losing our lives. And then... Please revive me with the medicinal leg that anoints your lotus feet. So that means this leg can revive us because this is a service we can do, we always do. And we can meditate on this, how to decorate Swamini's lotus feet. It's so beautiful. And then again, our life starts as the maidservant of Radhika. Radhe Radhe, Dandavats to all of you. Please, Such a wonderful verse. Can you read the line again with the dying, please? Yes. Oh, Goddess, this person has died from the bites of the black snake. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yes. So what, what came to my stupid mind was that actually you can go on the metaphorical uh, layer also on this one. And uh, here Raghunath Goswami is saying he has died from the separation pain, but actually we all know that he is not dead. So this is also a hint that actually, first of all, we have to leave our bodily conception behind. We have to leave our identification behind. That means we have to not die, uh, you know, not giving up slower, slower. Okay. So we should not give up our life, but this means actually... The dying here is not meaning that he is now lying on the Radakund and he is dead. And but here it means that we should give up the bodily identification of life. And and this means the dying out of separation. We should give up that that really that we can do this service. And then the reviving thing, the medicinal leg. What is this medicinal leg? This medicine leg coming from the lotus feet of Swamini is actually the giving of our Sita Swarup, is the Sita Pranali. So this which goes through the lotus feet of Swamini, this medicinal leg is also a symbol of our spiritual form, which we receive from the lotus hands of Gurudev, from the lotus mouth of Gurudev, but actually it's coming from the lotus feet of Swamini. So this is also very, very beautiful that this dying means we should give up our mortal identity and we identify with our stai bath as manjaris and the reviving the medicinal leg from the lotus feet of swamini is actually the attainment of the and the, and the receiving of the information of our spiritual form so that that was just what came to my mind Jai -ho. Jai -ho. very beautiful tarun baba as always Anybody else would like to share on this point? Okay, we continue. Um, Rade, Rade. Rade, Goravani, boy. Um, I was just hanging in the verse 8 because it's such a wonderful description. Tarun Baba explained so nice now. And uh, I want to go a step before, how it's possible that um, Raghunath actually came to that point. And he is pointing it out very nice, because he says, I am helpless and afflicted. This is our position. We are helpless and afflicted. So how to come there? And he is giving a wonderful description. We are in the middle of the ocean of sorrow. Yes, that's true. I feel always like this in the material world, in the middle of sorrow, an ocean. I can't help myself. But then he is saying, please take me to the wonderful abode of your lotus feet. So the wonderful abode is 
the seva. There where the seva is actually done. This is the abode of my Swamini. So I want to come there, but how? Only one way. He is pointing out by the powerful boat of your mercy. <coughs> it's not the sadhana, it's the mercy. And by the mercy we can do sadhana. The power of the sadhana is mercy. And if we always pray again and again, then we will be taken by that boat, by that powerful boat of Radharani's mercy. Yeah. That is so nice, Karawani. Actually, you are now quoting, you're quoting Rupa Goswami without, without mentioning him, because without, without Kripa, without the mercy of, of Radha and Krishna, no, no sadhana is possible. Rupa Goswami is saying in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu that Raganuka Bhakti, only the cause, the only cause of Raganuka Bhakti Sadhana is the mercy of Krishna, Radha and the devotees. So actually that is so nicely said now from you that without mercy, we cannot even think of doing anything, nothing. Without Guru Kripa, no Sadhana is possible. And I was just thinking also about the statement in the ninth chapter of the holy people of Bengal, the ho what, what is called? The holy saints of Bengal, where Radharaman Charan Brabhu, an incarnation of Nittai, is actually telling that only by Kripa, even Krishna, can only live by Kripa. What does it mean? Who is Kripa? If Krishna can only live on Kripa, who is Kripa? It's very clear. It's Swamini. <laughs> Without our Swamini, there is nothing, really nothing. Nothing exists outside of love. We know. We heard that so many times. Even Krishna cannot live without that mercy of Swamini. <laughs> she is Kripamai. So we are dependent on that. And Nita himself is telling this very, very clearly in this ninth chapter. Always when I read it, I'm so astonished because it's just a description of the mercy of Radha. How merciful. Because someone is asking, okay, if I'm a fellow and I can do no sadhana, what chance I have to do Raga Bhakti? And Radha Ramancharan is answering, Kripa, you can only get by Kripa. <laughs> It's such a wonderful statement. Kripa is coming to you only by Kripa. <coughs> so you need the contact to Kripa. And this is the Mahabhagava. So if we find the mercy, who, uh, the mercy of Radharani in a person who actually got that mercy already to some extent or more, best to all extent, Mahabhagava, then we can also get drops, maybe one drop of this mercy. So this is the way to sadhana, to steady sadhana. Without Kripa, no chance. Jai Shri Radhe. Wow. There is one question, Gauravani, coming to me. We already got a lot of Kripa, right? Yes. 
And uh, then we have to ask ourselves, do we also give some of this Kripa, what we got, also to others? That, that sounds a little heavy, maybe, but it is a, a natural question what has to come in, into our own uh, Selbstverständnis. Sunidhi, what says this? Self identity? No, Selbstverständnis. Consciousness, um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> in the consciousness of ourself it's understandable it's, it's, it's understandable, understandable. yeah there's a better word for it yeah. so I, I my thing is that we are as a manjari starter or beginners we have to think about this point that this Kripa, what we got, we have also to give, and uh, this is our responsibility. Because I can see that there in the world, what is around us, there is, uh, is a big lack of this Kripa. And so, who can transport this Kripa to others, if we don't do, we always say, okay, Gurudev, and uh, we always point on others who has to give Kripa. But I mean, we got so much until now on the point where we are, we also have to think about what about us. I mean, we have to be, um, wie nennt man das? Nicht überheblich sein. Not to be proud. We don't have to be proud. Or like this, this is not the meaning behind this. But we can think about ourselves. What is my place there to give something? We cannot stay always on the point what we will get but what we have to give as devotee and especially as a maid servant of Radhika. Because service means that. Not always ask for Gripa from others, but we also have to transport this what we got already to others. This is uh, in my uh, uh, Selbstverständnis. Consciousness, yes. my consciousness yeah my feeling of my feeling in, in this is uh, <laughs> that uh, we got so much mercy we have to give and then we open a door to the service in ourselves because uh, Can I, uh, we, we, we heard this point from uh, Goravani no? Kripa comes by Kripa, and then it, it, it's clear, right? So, we got Kripa, we have to give Kripa. It, it sounds a little uh, uh, proudy, maybe, for, but in ourselves, we know what we got, and maybe we can give a little bit, as in our capacity possible. Yes, yeah, sorry. Do you mean, you I don't know. Just that you explain when you realize that this is that when you realize that you serve everyone around you in this consciousness, like that you just serve in love basically everyone around you. This is what you're saying. And do I understand right? Is this one? You like to answer? Um not directly. Okay, um, indirectly is also. You, you want to answer? No, please. Um, I would like to. I think. Thank you for for this um, point of view. Um, perhaps we have to think it in in really another way. 
I would like to use the metaf metaphor of, of drops of dew, dew, Trautropfen. Uh -huh. So it's a morning sun, bright sun, frozen grass, and then the, the ice is melting and there are drops. Mm -hmm. And each small drop gets the contact. The light is so mighty and it it needs just every little single drop. And then what happens? The light is happy. It breaks in its spectral colors. And the drop also is in ecstasy and it's melting. And there something else is existing. There is dust. And another, another, um, um, condition. No more water, but steam. So perhaps the mercy we receive, and it is the greatest gift you can imagine, but then it changes. It, there is a transformation. And perhaps this is the, that we can distribute. Not, not with our responsibility. I have to receive this, this Christian mood. I like it. I like it very much. But perhaps there must be something really what, what never was known before. Perhaps. <laughs> Try to. Willst du deins nochmal wiederholen? I never spoke before. Jai Sri Ram. Do we not give Kripa automatically by our own example, by our own words, by our own actions? Do not, is it not possible that people will get inspired just by seeing us without us wanting to give the Kripa? The Kripa is there. If it's there, then it, it must be somewhere. And that it is in my words, in my words and in my actions. And it starts in my thought. Yes, yes. Not, not, not in my thought. <laughs> it has to start in my heart. It starts in the heart. Yes. yes. Okay, I agree. It starts in the heart. It infects the mind. It infects our words. And it infects our actions. And automatically, this Kripa is distributed without us consciously. Maybe we can consciously do it. I don't know. But this is just something I want to add. Thank you. And one word I, I add to this that uh, when Jesus said, and to your point, that uh, uh, who will be the biggest of all has to be the servant of all. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. So I just want to add uh, that uh, it was said that we shouldn't think uh, this is something that we will show like we we are somehow advanced or something uh, so we are now giving kripa to others this doesn't mean we are proud any one of us no this means sharing and bhakti sangha is actually sharing sharing between everyone so if you have something to share please do because in that way, you are helping others. Because this is, this is one way how Kripa works. By sharing. Gurudev always sharing with us. And like that Kripa through him works and comes to us. You know, sometime, even we don't know something, but Radhika acts through us. Mm -hmm. and gives the right answer to someone who needs it in that moment. Sometimes we don't know why we said that. Mm -hmm. But Radhika works. If we are open by, to, to help others, to serve others in that way. So don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid that somebody will think, oh, you are proud. No, why? Why should I be proud? 
When somebody is proud, this doesn't work like that. Yeah. So. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, anyway, uh, I'm not visible <laughs> like this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, I just uh, had this inspiration because all of you are talking so nicely about this sharing of mercy. And um, I like to uh, connect to what just. Uh, Hanumanji said uh, that how when you are flow in the flow, and this is by the way, we were uh, talking to Gurudev this morning, and he also mentioned this, when you're exposed to the flow of mercy, mercy is everywhere flowing everywhere. And it's only us that may block or not block this mercy. And we may use many metaphors like rock or false ego, or he just mentioned the idea of umbrella. You know, the mercy is the rain, and we put the umbrella to protect ourselves from the mercy because we think we need protection, but actually we, we need to get exposed to this rainfall of mercy. And uh, what just uh, Hanumanji said that... Um, it's not done consciously. It's like when you are in this flow, then whatever you do is actually uh, that you're becoming a channel of this mercy. And then you do your seva, whatever you're doing, just like our um, Pujariji here. He's giving uh, tea to everyone, you know. Every afternoon he's giving everyone tea. And I feel that this tea that he's distributing to all the devotees is showing the love. And also through this indirectly giving the mercy of Radha Mohan also, you know. Or whatever seva, whatever you do in your life. Like some of you may do your job or do whatever you're doing. And when you're exposed to the mercy, you're in the flow. Some people call it in the zone, being in the zone, right? When, when the creative people get in the zone and they, they're just uh, doing whatever they're doing without thinking, am I doing this right? Or without calculating, they just surrender to this flow. Then this mercy flows into our actions without even us having to think about it <clears throat> and then you do something you sing you uh, cook something or whatever and as you are a channel of the mercy that food or whatever you're doing has the capacity to uh, bring further to to transfer that energy that mercy to to anyone who is uh, getting that right Thank you so much. Thank you. That was very, very wonderful. Rahul, where are you? I'm eating. <laughs> You're getting the mercy, guy. Sorry. Sunday is always a little difficult. I don't want my photo when I eat. Sorry. <laughs> Radhe. <laughs> so in the previous verse, Sri Pat attained the relish of Swaminiji. Now the vision has gone and he feels the intense burning of love in separation. <laughs> Just as someone quickly dies when being bitten by a terrible black snake, being scorched from tip to toe by the intense fire of the poison, Shiragunad feels like dying when he is burning in the poison 
of separation from Sri Radharani. Swamini's foot leg is then the only elixir which can revive Tulasi. Nothing else can help against this burning fire of separation from Sri Radharani. <laughs> that is the special mercy of our Raghunath Das Goswami. He is Acharya of Prem Prayojan. And he has gotten the mercy of his Gurudev, Rupa Goswami. And he also has gotten the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who was the you know living example of this love and separation. And I want to quote Baba a few verses before he mentioned that why Raghunath Das Goswami was so special in his feelings of separation is because, actually I don't find it, because of the six Goswamis, Srila Raghunath Das Goswami was the only direct witness of Mahaprabhu's astonishing Gambira Lila. And therefore, a faint presence of these symptoms of divine love in separation is also visible in him. It's a big point, no? This is a big point when he was the only one who was there in the Gambira. What is that meaning? That we have to meditate on this. What is the special meaning of this pastimes in the Gambira? And in my understanding, it is the most private and confidential meeting in the time of Mahaprabhu. This is, for me, what I understand, this like to be in, in the Kunja, when Radha and Krishna are meeting. <clears throat> and who is there in the Kunja? We can meditate on this. Who is in the Kunja? Are there all gopis or gopas? Are they there? When meeting is happen and Mahaprabhu got their most intense feelings with whom he will share this. Maybe only with the maidservants of of him, actually. You see, <clears throat> Gaurasundara, if I may say, this medicinal food lack, you know, we are so fortunate that we can even listen about that and that we can hear about the food lack of Radhika's feet because, like you said right now, who else? Who else can come in experience to put this food lack on the hand? Who else can experience this? Nobody can experience this except for the Manjuris. No, there is no mentioning of foot leg of Swamini on the head of anyone in the scriptures before the time of Mahaprabhu. So the Manjuris are in such a fortunate position that they can get the foot leg of Radhika on their head. So this is again, the whole Vilabhakusa Manjula is full of that hints of the superiority in this, in this respect in Rasa the Manjari's experience. So nobody, Vishaka and Dalita and, you know, all the servants, they cannot even imagine what it would feel to have that 
on the head. She would never ever kick them, you know, like they, she kicks Raghunath on the head that the, the foot leg and mixed with the with the tears of, of, of Krishna will be on the head of this of the manjari. So this is the speciality of the manjaris. In every verse, we can see some hints about that. That the, the speciality of the mantra is, is really so wonderful. Jai Ho. Thank you, Tarun Baba. And also, we are so lucky because in a few days it will be the time of glorification of this good luck that we have been blessed by. Mahaprabhu's appearance and by the Goswamis who have left behind their experiences and their feelings. It's a great time to meditate about this gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu which he gave to all the confidential associates and which has been meant to be distributed because we were discussing what is the mercy and how to distribute mercy and which feelings and it's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's and Nittai especially also desire <coughs> to give this prem, this special prem, not just any prem, but this prem, this divine love in the mood of a maidservant this confidential prem, very personal, like you said, to get, you know, Shrimati Radhika's blessings in that very personal way, which she will not give to anybody. But we are so lucky that we can nowadays, by the mercy of our Gurudev and of our Guru Varga, we can hear about it, we can meditate, even though we might not be so elevated that it will be you know perfect but that doesn't matter we have the chance to hear it to listen to cherish to share and encourage each other to continue doing this and go deeper and deeper in the next two days we can cherish and we can you know how do you say we can uh, have a festival of love because we have been also blessed by this love and we can share the love with others there's a there's a very wonderful secret advice um, on this wonderful on this wonderful day of Gorpurnima. so like it is on Janmastami and radastami so on the appearance day of Go of goranga we all know why he came and we all know what he wants to give us unato chwala rasa swabhakti shriyam the highest gift which was ever give, ever given before <clears throat> but to follow the footsteps of the Mahachan, it is very wonderful on such a beautiful day not to pray directly to the one who is celebrated on that day, but you know who you can get the mercy flowing of the lotus feet of Mahaprabhu if you pray to Nimai, uh, Nitai, sorry, <clears throat> if you pray to Nityananda. If you pray to Nityananda on the day of Mahaprabhu, he will shower. Def he will even shower more mercy on you, Mahaprabhu, than when you go there directly. Because who was more merciful? Who was more merciful? Nityananda was much more merciful. He even gave give prema to decoits and rascals like Chakai and Madai. So if we have this in mind on Mahaprabhu's appearance day, that is just my humble approach. I pray to Nityananda. We pray every day to him, of course. But on that very special day, you go to his lotus feet and you pray to him that the whole mercy which is stored in the lotus feet of Mahaprabhu may fall on your head because this is what the what it what they love, what Krishna loves when we go to Radhika. And Mahaprabhu also loves it so much when we go to his beloved Nitai. So this is just a an advice, an humble advice. Of course, every we can also go directly to Sriman Mahaprabhu for sure. Now, of course. But this sneaky way to go to Lord Nityananda and pray that the full torrents of mercy would be showered upon my stupid head. And Nita is so merciful, he will open that because he is an Angamanchari. 
he is the gatekeeper of that whole thing, you know, to go to Rupa Manjari and to be presented to Radhika. So Ananga Manjari plays a key role. So for me on this a special day on, on Mahaprabhu's day, Nitai plays a very, very big role too. That I just wanted to share that. Thank you. Tarun Baba, that's so beautiful. This, um, for us, that means we are, <laughs> for us here in Vrindavan, that means we are, we have uh, manifest uh, Nitya, Nitai in front of us. So we are very lucky to be here on this special day because uh, our Gurudev is a manifestation for me, uh, for us, uh, from uh, Nityananda and Ananga Majari, both. So we are very lucky and uh, we are uh, uh, registrating this, this uh, uh, unbelievable blessings what we get here. This is uh, touching our hearts and especially when we are in in groups here, sit together, then this uh, this blessings become more uh, not visible, but uh, we can feel it very intense in the association. Of tangible. Those. tangible, tangible. Thank you, and uh, <laughs> and this is really. Uh, 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 more than uh, uh, what 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 we can uh, get anywhere in contact to Nitai, what you said, so we can feel it, and that will change our hearts here in the association of those who are with us in the same uh, same minded devotees, right? And this is very beautiful to to be here, and I'm very thankful for this, and that we just share this uh, beautiful topics uh, just a few days before the appearance day of our Mahaprabhu. Tarun Baba, thank you very much for pointing this out. Actually, I also feel this is so important. Because we may understand Chaitanya Mahaprabhu only really deep through Nitai's mercy. It's not possible in another way because this is our connection to understand Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. His mercy is always pointed out by Nitai. Like you mentioned with Jagai and Madai, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to call his chakra Sudarshan. But Nitai said, no, 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 don't do it. You came here in a special mood, please don't forget. Go back in the mood of Radha and kill the demons inside of the heart with your love, with your mercy, with your Kripa. This is the weapon of this Yuga, the Kripa. And we can only understand that in its real depth if we get the mercy of Nitai. So it's so important. Thank you for writing. You know, you know, there is also a deeper meaning of that for those who, sorry, a little bit too much kitri. <laughs> so, so um, there is also a very deep, deep meaning of, of the tattva of Nityananda and to go to his lotus feet, especially on that beautiful Mahaprabhu's appearance day, Gora, Gora Purnima, because for those of us, like you said, Gora Sunda, you are so blessed to have the fountainhead, your, your Gurudev is there, the starting point of your parampara. My beloved Gurudev is my next one in our parampara. And let, just look at where it all gipfles, you know, where it all, uh, you know, where it all um, heads to, you know, where it all goes to. It, it doesn't go straight to Mahaprabhu, you know, the, the, the one, <clears throat> the one, uh, we, we, we meet each other along the way, you know, the parampara of my Gurudev goes this way, goes this way, goes this way, and then we meet at the lotus feet of Sriman Mahaprabhu, actually not even Sriman Mahaprabhu, but Chanavama. So, so this is very, very deep, deep stuff, you know, that Sadhu Maharaj lineage, 
and Baba's lineage, they meet at the lotus feet of Janavama. So this wow. is also very important because Mahaprabhu himself, he never gave that, he never gave that uh, order, you can say. He never was in charge of starting really in the sense like that, a diksha line. So he gave that job, so to say, to his beloved associates. So we are in a beautiful parampara of Lord Nityananda. Friends of mine are in a beautiful parampara of Advaita Acharya. Some friends are in the beautiful parampara of Gadara Pandit. So we are in the line of Lord Nityananda through his beautiful consort Janavama. And by that connection, this parampara, by that beautiful pipeline, you can say, in the modern world, the oil flows to huge pipelines. Some, yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, but here in the spiritual world, the pipelines are always flowing. And like this lady just said, this wonderful uh, comment, we are standing ourselves in the way of these pipelines. So these pipelines, they are flowing all the time. So why do I not get so much creeper? Because I'm an idiot. Therefore, I don't get the creeper. So when we not behave in a way like this and that, the creeper will not flow like that. But on that day, when you pray to Lord Nityananda, he is the fountainhead of both. Ananda Das Babaji Maharaj, my beloved Gurudevs and your Gurudevs, uh, Pariva. So we can imagine how pleased he will be if we do that in that way, because he is the one who gave that also to his wife, Chanavama, and we are so lucky. He, she, she is an Angamancha. We are directly connected to the most intimate circle of Srimati Radhika's girlfriends by that beautiful parampara, by that beautiful Paribar, and this means if we have this in mind on such beautiful days, not Nityananda's appearance day and Mahaprabhu's appearance day are for us the most important on the, on the, on the level of Sadaka Deha. But this is really, really beautiful to understand that this tattva, Nityananda tattva, it's, it's so deep and it works very nicely when you do it on such a beautiful day like Nityananda's appearance day. Jai Ho. Jai Ho. Should I continue reading or anybody else would like to share on this? <coughs> so, Sri Raghunath feels like dying when he is burning in the poison of separation from Sri Radharani. Swamini's footleg is then the only elixir which can revive Tulasi. Nothing else can help against this burning fire of separation from Sri Radharani. Even though Shyama Sundara was accompanied by millions of gopis. He could not find pleasure without Sri Radha. Suffering separation from her, he went to the bank of the Jamuna and lamented for her. How was the name from Krishna and what you read here? Shyama Sundara. <laughs> oh, alas, when will I get that Radha? I, just, I, I, I oh, I skipped here. Sorry. The poet Jayadev describes the Vasantaras. The springtime rasa dance as follows Kamsari Krishna left all the other beautiful girls of Braja to take Radha, who is the essential chain who binds him to his lusty desires in his heart. When Sri Radhika became jealous 
and left Krishna behind. Krishna looked for her everywhere. His mind pierced by Cupid's darts. When he entered, when he could not find her, he entered a kunja on the bank of the Yamuna and began to lament there. Even a billion gopis cannot soothe Krishna's pain of separation from Sri Radha. Srimad Das Goswami described in his book Mukta Charitra how Krishna anxiously lamented about Sri Radha's absence to his own queen Satyabhama in Dvaraka after describing his Braja Lila to her. Oh, alas! When will I get that Radha who is like a champaka flowers on my chest, who showers my lotus like eyes with nectar, whose bodily beauty is the only place for my pastimes? who is like a vine for the bird of my heart to sit on, who is my desired opulence and my very life. Even a stone will melt after hearing how pitifully Krishna lamented to himself about Sri Radha after he drank the sweet nectar words of Madhu Mangal, and thus remembered her. Haradhe, you are the abode for the pigeon of my life, a boundless river with a stream of sweetness that is enhanced by Prem and a mine of jokes, riddles, qualities and arts. You are the moonlight that feeds the chakora bird of my eyes. <coughs> alas, alas, which force of bad luck has taken me away from you? after first finding you. There is a point that also touches ourselves, every one of us. That is the point that we miss this meeting, what Krishna remembers. This is the difference between all of us and Raghunathas and Krishna. We have this missing point. We never met her directly. Otherwise, we will have the same pain of separation than Raghunathas and Krishna. This is a, we are waiting for this moment when we get this direct touch and yes. Gorasunda, I have a good idea please if tell would, me if, because if, this point is excellent if I would be now with you I would do one thing you know be, it's perfectly correct we never met Maradika but there is one way how to meet her directly and you know it just go tomorrow to Radakun sit down for three four hours and you are directly in her presence and this Radhakund is not different from Swamini. Sit there, pray for one day and come back and hold the whole Akus, the whole batteries 
a surcharge with Radhika Prema because Raghunathas himself, he said, the lake is not different from Swamini. We cannot see Swamini. I cannot say, for, at least for myself. I don't know how she looks like. I don't know. But the lake of her is not different from her. So when we go there, we are actually for 100,000% in the presence of Swamini. So this would be a good advice. I see so many people sitting there. After maybe Mahaprabhu's appearance day, take them and go to Radhakund and you are fully in the presence of Swamini. Jai Ho. Jai Ho. <laughs> Tarun Baba, this is only possible when you guide me. You have to come. Yeah, we will be there 1st of April. I okay. cannot wait. <laughs> I cannot wait. <laughs> counting the days, counting the days, my dears. Wish us luck. In the same way, the kinkaris have no other shelter but Shrimati's lotus feet, from whom the embodiment of full transcendental bliss. Shri Krishna suffers so much separation and there is no other means to soothe their hearts that are burning in the fire of separation from her than to see these beautiful feet. The kinkaris don't want Krishna alone. Their love for Srimati Radharani is so pure that even in their dreams they don't desire Krishna's intimate company. One of the 108 names that our Raghunath Das Goswami gives to Sri Radhika is Svagananda Dvaita Jiva Tu Svayahankara Vardini. She is the only life support of her maidservants, and this increases their pride. Now we hear, listen this this word pride. <laughs> Here we can listen this this word pride. Goranga Sunda, you are a little blocked huh, by your voice. Eh? No, I'm very sure. He is completely absorbed. <laughs> I was speaking so much, and then finally, the situation that I can relish. So. I didn't even see my brother sitting there. That is wonderful. Jai Ho Gaurast Goranga Sundara. So nice that you are also there. <laughs> so wonderful. Thank you, Baba. Thank you for your mercy. There is description of, of how we can be proud. Is it right? As a maid servant. So we can listen to this. These maidservants have such a deep love for Shirada. And they do not even have that for Krishna. No one but the Kinkaris are so worthy of being Radhika's Priya Patra, object of love. This is experienced best at the time of separation. By Swamini's grace, the maidservant in separation, the Viharini Dasi, 
has wonderful experiences during Smaran, dreams, and Spuran. And these experiences are her only life support. So it's beautiful here that first we listen about Raghunadas Goswami's feeling, how he feels that he's bitten by a snake of separation and he feels like dying. What he's dying from is bodily consciousness. He wants to be revived by the mercy of Srimati Radhika's foot leg. Means he wants to, you know, again come into his meditations as Tulasi Manjari. Mm. That's also a nice description of living and dying. Because if, if we realize our spiritual bodies, then we also realize that our material bodies actually are uh, uh, that material. Because it's temporary. That not means that we don't misrespect the beauty of the human being and uh, the big blessing what we got because of using these bodies. Without these bodies, we will never able to read the book, to meet our Gurudev and so on, to go in relationship to others. This is only possible by this beautiful human body. And this is our responsibility. This is our responsibility. Yes, and, and we always have to be thankful for every blessing we got in this way. What actually came that as, as uncountable birds by our Swamini. She is preparing every single soul since eternally to that point where we are now. So there is always the guidance what Gurudev said of love in every single form of being we experienced. And now we are on the top of that, that, what we can get in this, I would say, in, in the three worlds of material existence. That we get the blessing, we meet the Guru, a teacher, who can bless us with a spiritual body. And so that means the realization of real life, because our soul, has this quality of eternally. And this body has not this quality. So we need this new body to come in the real life. And this is an experience what our Raguna does made. He knows he lives in the spiritual body. And when he come back in material body and cannot serve in the spiritual body, this is like dying. Again, he want to jump in the spiritual body, in the body of a maid servant, where he can do this seva in the spiritual world eternally. No? So we can understand how is his suffering just here. But uh, there is also, we can understand why he do this, why he don't stay there. If he not come back, we never heard about these stories. We never heard this. There was no other being who is sharing this to us. Only He. He give all this by the explanation of Anandadas Babaji. 
by our Gurudev, so that we can understand what is the meaning of a spiritual body. And he give also the view in this eternal abode we don't got before. And this all came by the blessing of our sweet Mahaprabhu. He inspired all of them to open this window to our hearts. Not so much the mind. <laughs> but, Yes, and how is this opened? Sometimes we think, or I think from the material point of view, all these feelings of separations are quite cruel. It seems to be something even negative. But here it says, by Swamini's grace, it's a grace to feel these feelings of missing Swamini. By Swamini's grace, the Viharini Dasi, the maidservant who was in separation feelings, has wonderful experiences during Smaran, dreams, and Spuran. Means that this, these feelings, they culminate in the intense, condensed emotions. And these emotions, they give birth to smaran, to remembrance. How was it? How is it that Swamini you know, how was I serving Swamini's lotus feet before? In the case of Raghunath Das Goswami. Please give me the medicine for my soul, for myself. Bless me that I can serve you. And then all of a sudden comes a dream about it or a spuran, like a vision. So these feelings of separation, they are the entrance door to get the spiritual revelations. Uh, yes, I just want to flow in uh, Sunitij's words, because we should feel this separation out of love in a really relishing way. And in all three stages of devotion, sadhana bhakti, bhava bhakti, and prema bhakti, this separation is present and dominant, actually. A devotee who has a taste, who has an attachment to Radhika, he is relishing separation like a very sweet form of love, even in the stage of sadhana bhakti. And when he comes, it's up to ashakti, or because he is so attached. And when we say attached, it means he is uh, addicted. addicted for his beloved Ishtadev. So, because of this addiction, he is relishing the sweetness of love. Everyone who has or had this kind of experience when he is in love, even in this material body, separation of, belo of beloved is so intense and vivid and brings all the name, form, qualities, and different pastimes which we exchange between. So this separation is, like Sunitiji says, the key and for entrance. Prabhupada many times said, without proper separation there is no milana, 
there is no meeting. Because this separation prepares the heart, melting the heart, purifying the heart, preparing the consciousness, preparing the soul, preparing the Swarup also. And when the another level of sadhana starts to appear spontaneously in the heart of devotee, like a bhava bhakti, then deep dreams are starting and short visions are starting because the heart is completely absorbed in Radhika and devotees see himself crystally and also he sees for a short time Spurti show uh, Spurti is showing actually in a light short light the form of Sri Radhika, but not even the form. The name of Radhika sounds in the ears of devotee. This is the Spurti. When the name of Radharani is resounding in the ear of devotee, because the name is residing in the heart of devotee. And then the visions, deep visions, vivid visions, are starting to come in the waves according to Radhika's desire. So we can see here that each stage of sadhana, sadhana bhakti, bhava bhakti, ba prema bhakti, is completely dependent on this separation mood. And on each stage, separation is even intense. Devotee who is in the stage of Ruchi, he feels separation, of course, because he has a taste for his beloved. And someone who is on a Shakti, he feels even more separation because he is attached, addicted. And devotee who is on the Bhava level, he feels even more because he is mad out of love for Shrimati Radhika. He is fully filled with this rati, madness. And then separation is even more increasing on the stage of prema where direct darshan is going on. And what can we imagine and how is it possible for me, at least, it's not possible to imagine which kinds of separation is going on on other levels, up to Mahabhava, up to Madana Mahabhava. So when we are listening about separation of Raghunath, we are listening separation of someone who is in the stage of Mahabhav, Madan Mahabhav, he feels Radhika's Madana Mahabhav, and his separation is actually unbelievably strong and by listening and meditating on his separation we are practicing the sadhana we are practicing sadhana which can melt our hearts his separation is melting my heart not my heart <coughs> not my separation i don't have separation but meditation absorption in his separation melts the heart and gives the drops of the Kripa by the mercy of Gurudev, who opened that heart, who melted that heart. Because Gurudev is preparing the heart to receive Raghunath's crying, Acharya's crying, not my concoction, not my imagination crying, not crying from my senses or mind, but from my spiritual identity. And this is coming from the source of separation. And this is Shrimati Radhika. Is it true that love increases through separation? Yes, only through separation love increases. And the more person feels separation, 
when meeting appears, comes, then it's so strong with full waves of emotion. And when that moment separation again starts, then it's even more burning. Why? Because the next meeting will be new and fresh and even more intense. This is the way how separation is the key point of the but pure separation, not lamenting on myself. Pure separation, we can taste and relish from those who are already on that level. And this vilapa is actually this crying book full of separation mood. Because in separation there's so much humility present. All necessary feelings of devotion, all necessary qualities of devotees is present and manifested in separation, in lover. Who is real lover, he can understand this. Who really has or had experience can understand how much heart is burning of love in the moment of separation. So no love? Without love, there is no separation. I feel so good. I am cool. I am peaceful. I don't want any disturbances in my life. I don't want waves. I want positive energy to flow in my heart. No! This is not bhakti. This is not devotion. Devotion is meant for devotee who wants to burn out of love for her beloved Radhika. This is devotion. And then devotion starts to manifest in the service. Which kind of service I will do if I don't have separation out of love? <laughs> I love my friends, and if I'm burning I will, for them, I will try to serve them. But if I'm not burning for their association, I will not do anything. I will just say, Rade, Rade, hi, hi, bye, bye, and that's all. You know, we are, we are talking about very serious things, very high things which can change our hearts. If we miss this, then we are in bad luck. Yesterday we were talking about bad luck. So it means full heart to the words of Acharyas. And then Kripa, their Kripa, will completely pervade our existence. No other way. Oh, sorry. Radhe, Radhe. <clears throat> if we if we see one day in in Vrindavan, what happened in one day in Vrindavan? Actually, the whole day is a preparation for the meeting, but the main time is in separation. The meeting is not the main, but to make the meeting successful and in the optimum of exchanging of the feelings. There is a need of obstacles. Some snakes are on the way. There is the mother-in-law <laughs> on the way. <laughs> That's not easy to come together. And uh, the whole day, both are meditating. How how can I meet? How can I meet? And the whole dam is is meditating. How can what can we do to help this meeting? <laughs> and so this is a the whole day is a preparation for this meeting, and this suffering, this so-called suffering, is a preparation 
for the meeting, and it's increasing this. If they can stay there always together, it's also nice. But what I can feel, the intense intensity of the meeting is much more when there is exactly this amount of separation, what is creating in the Holy Dham, in Vrindavan. And this is what every single grass and every tree, the Yamuna, all the birds, they are only working on this that they increase with their service, the meeting with Rata and Mohan. So, and, and uh, that is the one day, this is one day in Vrindavan. If we meditate on this, then, and uh, even we as Manjaris, we, we take a big part of this, in this service, to arrange everything. It's not easy. We have to arrange the place. We have to know the way. We have to know the kunj, where the meeting is. We have to give all these informations to those who like to meet. Maybe Krishna don't know where Radhika is, evening time, when the meeting takes place. So many things are taking part of this eternal meeting in Vrindavan. So separation is very important. Obstacles are very important. By Swamini's grace, the Virahini Dasi has wonderful experiences during Smaran, dreams, and Spura, transcendental revelations. <laughs> And these experiences are her only life support. A revelation gives temporary peace. And a separation gives a burning suffering. So this is a beautiful subject, I feel <coughs> worthwhile to meditate here. This is the point for meditation. Hmm? This is the point for meditation. Mm. For proper practicing of... That is the, the key, it's a key. Baba is giving us some key to an entrance of some feelings. For example, he was mentioning before, when we are feeling separation in, in either way, realized or non-realized, you know, it doesn't matter. But if we feel, I want to be, you know, there, do some service, be in the, you know, useful for my guru, Dev, you know, whatever kind of separation we feel, that there's a lack, and the, the lack indicates a desire, right? I'm missing intensity, I'm missing, uh, you know, some realizations or revelations. And then if this missing feeling becomes very, very strong or compressed, then all of a sudden something comes. Hmm? When this thick, condensed feeling come to us by mercy, then some revelation might come and I feel, oh, wow, now I got a, a hint or a mercy. Now I understand why Mahaprabhu is 
coming to this world, you know, in these feelings, try to relish, you know, Srimati Radhika's emotions, because Krishna, he wants to be in the service of Srimati Radhika. Just to give one example, for example. And then I feel happy because before maybe I did not get it. And that gives some temporary peace. Now Baba says, you know, we are hearing for many years, we are reading for many years, but still there are some, maybe some blanks. No? I mean, not maybe, but there are blanks. There are many blanks. Why, why do I not have a feeling for this? Why not? I am touched when I'm hearing it, because there's a blank. And when this blank, you know, this empty space of my ignorance or my foolishness, like Tarun Baba, you said, then when this is somehow filled and I get some revelations, wow, then I feel happy. And then I usually I run to Gurudev or anybody else <laughs> and I say, I had some feelings and is this right, is this wrong? I am like a child and I go and I always need some confirmation. And that gives some temporary relief because I feel at least I have some little drop of mercy. Is this really a drop of mercy or was it again my mind? You know, I try to get some confirmation. And Gurudev then says yes or no, or he says what I want to add to this, or you know, you have to go in that direction. We are so lucky here. We can go there to Gurudev and we meditate during the day, then we get some revelation. And that gives some temporary peace. But Baba says temporary. Why temporary? No, because it is only for some time and then again, where is the feeling? To press the feelings more. So it's like a steam machine. This is like a steam machine or this steam pot. The more you are putting the press, the feelings are more intense. And then they are just burst out, but just for temporary time. And then again, pressing, pressing, pressing. But spiritual feelings, not the mind, not, not pressing the others, but pressing the spiritual feelings. This separation, the function of separation is. This is the function of separation. And separation, he says, gives a burning suffering. Burning suffering, yeah. Like a fire, no? Like a fire. Because when the steam is going out, you know, it's burning, get out from there. And Radhika is always in that mood. She is always burning in desire to satisfy Krishna, always burning in desire to meet him. And when they meet, she is burning to satisfy even him more than he can tolerate it, actually. This is such a steam, strong, burning steam, which Radhika has in her Mah mother and Mahabhava. And Krishna felt unconsciousness because of this steam, loving steam. And she said to Manjari, wake him up. He doesn't know what I have to give to him, you know. It's just the beginning. And he, wh which kind of guy this is? He just fainted in the first minutes, you know, in of our armor <laughs> Yes, of my sidelong glass. Please wake him up. I'm burning from desire to satisfy him, not myself. So we should try to understand the feelings and pure of love of Shimate Radharani. And it's very exp nicely expressed in Shishashtaka eight words. Last one. Any Chaitanya Charitamrit, I don't know, Antia Lila or 20 or something. What does it mean, pure, pure love? By reading, by listening, by drinking the words of Srimati Radharani and her beloved, we can get at least some drop of feelings. And then, because this drop is ocean, actually of burning separation. This is the ocean of burning separation. And one qualification is most necessarily to tolerate this burning. 
purity of the heart. Without purity, no one will accept this kind of burning fire of love. And when the meeting is coming, it's like ice is coming. Who will tolerate the frozen ice? Only someone who has a pure heart. And this is Manjaris. Frozen ice? Can you explain frozen ice? Frozen ice, you know, like a fire and the ice. You have fire and the ice. When you touch the fire, because of love, pure love, it looks like ice. And when you touch the ice, ice looks like a burning fire. So to tolerate it, to be in between these two elements of love, we need a pure heart. And we have to be infused with the purity and from the heart of those persons who already have. And we have wonderful chance here. So this is the way how Prema explained crooked way. It's always like a, I'm burning, but at the same time I feel in a pleasant mood. And the, another time I'm cooling because of meeting, and at the same time I am burning from the fear when it will finish. So separation is always here. Even during even during the meeting, Radhika is always in fear when it will start. That will just go away from each other. Yeah, this is this Prema Vaichitya. This is Prema Vaichitya. This is Prema Vaichitya. She is sitting on his lap and she suddenly starts to think, where is he? Where is where is my beloved? This is the symptom of Vipralamba, one of the symptoms of Vipralamba. Mana is one of the symptoms of Vipralamba. When she is angry, he cannot touch her. He cannot embrace her. This is Vipralamba from him. And putting him in position under the, her lotus feet to receive this Govinda Jivanam, this red luck on his chest, on his head. And this, that Krishna we are worshipping. Jai Ho! Who is burning from separation of my Swami. No other Krishna. Is interesting for my Daddy. Thank you so much. So beautiful. This topic is very deep. What we speak about today, and uh, uh, we speak about a, <clears throat> a kind of a sickness. One can die by a bite of a snake, uh, especially black snakes. But we also heard about the therapy today. So it is red leg. Red leg is the therapy against the bite of a black snake. And maybe Gurudev, if you like to share something together with us here on this heavy topic of separation, bite of a black snake and the therapy of red leg. Radhe 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 of sharing wonderful Mundava <laughs> <laughs> What a must you have 
Baba, give us in our life is no ending. I start in 80s to read this book in Bangla. And when I read it, new, new flavor is coming out. Wow, I cannot realize how deep we all realize it. Thank you to inspire me. And it's a very, very, very special book, very special words. Is a golden verse, nothing more to understand. If you not understand, only we will live in Sanchariva. Movement will be always there in life. By the fortune, mercy of the Baba, we can make ourselves as high, fixed one point. This is the first. This is the only one book I see in my life that is every day is new realization that come in our life. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. You I think to me. There's something I can also realize why sharing is the be beautiful subject that everyone can share and give fresh new new flavor of things. Thank you. Good if we're waiting for thank you. The appearance day of Goranga <laughs> Mahaprabhu and here are... My request is that I request that from tomorrow morning everyone has to share 10 15 minutes about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, reason of appearance of him and details of this beauty. What he come and give us in our life. Appearance means keeping him in the heart is appearance. And I will want that it should be Zoom classes, that it will be recorded and everybody can feel it and share it. If you have a time and sure share. And give some time in that. Suniti, I will advise you that you organize this and undo it. Yes, good. Goras, Goranga is there. Gora Sundar is there. All are there. I will request everyone to do. And Kishori Leela is making it. About the Mahaprabhu appearance day, very nice Leela. How why he appeared and how what is a very beautifully she prepared to show. Radhe. Radhe Gurudev, thank you. Oh my God, time is over. Yes, time is over. So tomorrow we have some Zooms in the morning here and also at lunchtime. If you want, there will be the connections on the Radha Dasya. Thank you for all of you sharing and your love.